What is a story from your office that could be feature on the office? My office had a terrible year. Sales were down, morale was low, and turnover was looming. Instead of listening to the employees' concerns, management held a funeral in our warehouse. We were instructed to air our grievances on paper, and then we ceremoniously marched up to the front and put our papers in a shredder. The shredded paper was then put into a cardboard casket and carried out to the dumpster by pallbearers and followed by a manager dressed as the Grim Reaper. The CEO proceeded to give a eulogy on a PowerPoint presentation that included a lot of Kid Rock musical interludes. It was the most awkward experience of my career. Also, it didn't work. Most of us don't work there anymore. TL, DR, the CEO of my company held a funeral for a bad year instead of trying to fix the company's problems. We all quit. On my very first day on the job, the receptionist had made some strawberry cookies and she was really excited for me to try one. I really don't care for strawberries and I wasn't in the mood for a cookie and she was so sweet that I didn't want to hurt her feelings, so I told her I was allergic to strawberries. And she threw them all away immediately. A whole tray, dropped it right into the trash and told everyone not to bring any strawberries into the office. So I've been pretending to be allergic to strawberry for three years now. So, I am diabetic and try not to eat sugary snacks and stuff. A few jobs ago, I was given the task to root out this project manager who had a very loyal staff, but produced zero work. The CTO suspected he was just farting around, so he sent me to work with them, since one of their biggest complaints was Linux doesn't work and I was their new senior Linux admin. The first meeting with this guy, he brings a cake. It's an expensive cake, like from a real bakery. Probably sent him back 50 to 60 dollars. I tell him, no thank you, I can't have that much sugar. Oh, but surely you can have one slice. No, I am a diabetic and I don't want to have blurry vision and be sleepy the rest of the day. Oh, but your doctor won't know. I have to refuse. Several times. He starts to get panicky. One of his programmers explains, he's diabetic, cake will make him sick. How about pie? These chocolate croissants? And so on. Guy's got a lot of confections on him. Turns out, he was trying to bribe me, and saw I was fat, and thought, that fat fucker can probably be swayed by cake. The fact I didn't eat sweets never occurred to him as a thing, especially if I was fat, and he was out of options. I am surprised he didn't start bringing in hookers, although he did ask me a lot of what type of women I liked, and my wife wasn't the answer he wanted, so maybe. He wasn't too bright. He wasn't doing any work, either, and had been scamming the company of money via consultants and contractors who were mostly his friends. Long story short, when bribes didn't work, he used threats. Kept asking what car I drove and what parking garage was it in. I told him I commute with someone else who picks me up at work or I ride the metro. Eventually, when his contract expired, he was let go. In our monthly meeting with the entire office staff, there was a serious discussing which lasted for 45 minutes about the sort of toilet paper that should be used, single, double, or triple ply. Highlights of the discussion were e.g. the arguments used were that you don't need double as you could simply fold two single ply pieces. Two ladies went into details how it feels when using single ply versus double ply. Some staff members felt that their vote should count more as they had a weaker bladder or had bad digestion. It was beautiful but also cringeworthy and 45 minutes was just too long. Not an office, but still workplace. I worked in a large retail store. Some highlights, all from the same assistant manager. He took a trip to Seattle and was inspired when he went to that famous Pike's Place fish market, where they throw the fish and all. He even held a meeting showing us a video about this place and said he wanted us to be more like that. The rough equation in his head must have been throwing things equals improved employee work ethic so he brought in a football and would just randomly start throwing it at employees, whether they were paying attention or not. This practice came to a halt when he hit a girl square in the face with it as she was talking to a customer. Another time, it was discovered our store had a rat problem, we sold birdseed at the time and the rats loved it. So he went to the animal shelter and adopted kittens, not grown cats, to come hunt the rats. The kittens never caught anything, and one was run over by a forklift. That ended that. And, last one, we were at a regional meeting and towards the end of it we were informed that each store team was supposed to be performing a skit. The other stores knew about it and had something prepared. We did not. So he ran out to his car, got his teenage daughter's cheerleading outfit, and performed our company's cheer slash chant thing. This one was actually pretty awesome cause he really took one for the team, doing something like that so the rest of us didn't have to stumble our way through making a skit up on the spot. Company management at a place I worked at before hired a consultant group to figure out the inefficiencies in the company better. Consultants told them the biggest inefficiency was management. They promptly fired the consultant group and nothing changed. 
The day my coworker brought in a Tachi magic wand because all of us had been complaining about our sore backs from being hunched over our laptops. She was so proud of herself for being so thoughtful and doing something so lovely. Nobody could keep a straight face. I worked as a photo editor at a studio specializing in school photos. One thing I noticed there was that everyone was very environment conscious, especially when it came to recycling. There were recycling bins next to the trash bins everywhere around the building. And people were very careful about making sure they put things in the correct receptacles, separating out cans, plastic, glass, etc. I was going to community college in the mornings at the time, so I tended to work a later shift than everyone else. I was generally the last one out of the building except the janitors. And that's why I knew the terrible secret to it all. The janitors would take the trash cans and recycling bins, and dump both into the same big trash can to take out to the dumpster. We didn't have a recycling dumpster in the first place. It all was going to the same place. There was no point to any of it. There never was. I'm not sure if this would fit into the office, as I've not watched all that much of it, but it feels like something that could. My husband decided to bring me flowers at work for our anniversary. The majority of my coworkers came into my office and complimented my flowers. Almost all of them noted that the flowers had no smell, which will become important later. Then, after the flowers had been sitting on my desk for four whole days, this lady, we will call Barb walks down the hall to my office, and she sees my flowers. She comes running into my office, sniffs the flowers, and starts screaming at me. I knew it. Your flowers are causing me to have an allergic reaction. Get them out of here right now. I freaked out, apologized, and told her I would put them in my car until the end of the day. She ran out of the room. As I went outside, I saw Barb standing by my car. She was clearly waiting for me to see if I'd put them away. I did, went back inside, and spent the rest of the morning getting chewed out by my mangers for almost killing Barb. Despite the fact that they had all seen the flowers and said nothing to me prior to this incident. When I asked her about it later, she said that she wasn't allergic to the flowers specifically. She is just very sensitive to smell and the smell of the flowers was what had set her off. Kind of reminded me of the episode where Michelle made Pam put her flowers. TLDR coworker has an allergic reaction as soon as she sees flowers that were sitting on my desk for four days. I'm a pretty young consultant and because the number of desks on the main floor is limited, I was moved to the upstairs portion with the interns. I've been forgotten multiple times, from meetings, to drinks, to the occasional even it where I'm told to wait for the phone call, only to go down and check and notice everyone has left and I've been waiting for nothing. I accidentally caused a frozen dinner to fall from the freezer in the teacher's lounge. When I picked it up I saw it was my good friend's lunch and the corner had come open. I thought it would be funny to slip in a tiny note that said eat me. I figured I would see her at lunch when she discovered it. Well something came up and I forgot about the note. Later in the week I heard about how my friend called the frozen food company to complain about the creepy note that was in her meal box. I hadn't meant to freak her out, but I did. We had a good laugh about it later. A few. The manager who announced to his department there's some good and bad news. The good news I've been promoted to head up finance at head office. Unfortunately we're centralizing all the accounts departments and their jobs are to be made redundant. The director who bought the biggest Christmas tree possible without first checking the ceiling heights in our office. The time the office fish tank, there were trendy floor to ceiling ones on each floor, burst flooding the floor void to the server room taking down all network services. But to cap it all the receptionist saved most of the fish in a bucket and poured them into the tank in the offices above there was a piranha feeding frenzy and fish skeletons kept floating to the surface for the rest of the year. The time the IT department persuaded the new IT help desk officer to hide in a big new printer box to surprise the accounts department but instead wheeled him to the atrium where he jumped out in full view of 500 members of staff. I could go on 30 years in a corporate environment, the office both UK and USA is funny because it's so true. We had a student who doesn't understand professional or personal boundaries who would come in and regularly ask all the professional staff very cringy, awkward, and uncomfortable questions, and often ask us to go out to the bars or to go clubbing with him. He's 18 and we're in the US. If he ever saw you outside of the office, he'd shout your name from wherever he was, so now anyone around has their attention on you and this student, and he'd then proceed to continue his awkward line of questioning. The kid's growing though. Some good real talks about boundaries have helped a lot, and we all love him. Those first couple months were really rough though. I started a pool when one of my coworkers left for vacation after cleaning out his desk. Spring cleaning. Resignation. Fired. There were many factors that played into the odds. He kept a soda stream in the break room for communal use, which was gone. He had left a pair of raggedy running shoes underneath his desk, which was a constant item of debate. Do you think they're just downright ratty and he doesn't want them anymore? 
What if the rattiness actually makes them his favorite running shoes where they're most comfortable, because of how broken in they are, etc. It got really out of hand to a point where HR made me gave everyone their money back and cancel the pool. I couldn't help but wonder if anyone took any side action on my meeting with HR. End result was a push, anyway. Turns out, he told his boss he planned to resign and was fired the next day. The firing was a favor to him. Had he resigned, he wouldn't have gotten any benefits or severance. When our HR rep came by to box up the shoes and leftover pens at his desk, our Russian developer flat out asked her if he was fired because he intercoursed with a female co-worker. When the HR rep refused to provide any information, the Russian lady asked her why it not work out? He's recently divorced and wealthy. She is young and beautiful. I not understand. My business partner is Dwight. Had an employee whose wife was stabbed multiple times in a robbery. Needless to say he spent time at the hospital ICU during business hours. One day he calls and letting us know he won't make it, he has to meet with the doctor. My BP responds. Well you're going to have to attempt to make it in, we only give three days off when someone dies. I told my employee to meet with the doctor and I'd talk with him later. Someone wrote an internal email to the entire company by mistake. Literally four hours of people non-stop replying all to report they also received the email in error or telling others to stop replying all. Shitty Photoshop, MS Paint, to convince a co-worker we went out to lunch without them. Someone asks an innocent question and suddenly a shouting match between four people breaks out in the middle of the cube farm. Some of my married co-workers are making a list of reasons my unmarried co-worker should find a girlfriend and get married. We keep a tally of the number of times we accidentally drop things. I'm in second place. There was a guy here once, before I was hired, that led a big project and when it all flopped people found that he didn't know anything about it. There was a couple really lazy Fridays last summer where we spent 30 minutes trying to shoot big rubber bands at each other to knock stuffed animals off each other's heads. The one day one of our contractors was in his cube like normal and all of a sudden the ceiling vent starts spewing a false smelling black smoke right on top of him and the maintenance crew had come patch something up immediately. Our advertising department wanted to pitch to many. They brainstormed all kinds of ideas and decided to send an invite to come in and chat but still needed a hook. Someone suggested having it delivered by a little person, because, you know, many. Inexplicably, everyone loved it. It took our own David Brent to finally utter the immoral words, can we just pause a moment to consider whether the midget adds to, or detracts from, our pitch? Don't feel too bad for the little person who lost a gig. They booked him to be delivered in a box dressed as an evil clown and jump out with a meat cleaver the next Halloween. I woke up late for work because I slept through my alarm. Being late sucks on its own, but I was supposed to kick off the morning meeting that day. I managed to brush my teeth and put my clothes on before heading out the door. Somehow I managed to get there right on time. I walked into the conference room, most of my coworkers were already there. I noticed a change in their expressions one by one and knew something was wrong, very, very wrong. Then I remembered, I had not taken out my hair curlers. They were the kind you sleep in that are supposed to give you beach waves. I had noticed them when I was getting dressed of course, but told myself I'd take them out while hauling ass to the office. Unfortunately I got so caught up in dodging traffic and practicing what I was going to say at the meeting I'd forgotten all about them. I went ahead and gave my presentation with my hair curlers still in, I thought if I acted confident and like it was no big deal no one would say anything, it's been 3 years and I still haven't lived it down. It's a frequent antidote told around the office, but at least I didn't get in any trouble and everyone had a good laugh I suppose. What about you? Tell us your story in comment section, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Right now!